Yes, yeah, good. <laughs> we are finally in our new kitchen and I am going to introduce you to the kitchen and we're gonna fry up some chicken. First thing we're going to do is mix up our seasoning for fried chicken. If you don't have the right seasoning, no matter how you fry it, it's not going to be as good as it should be. Okay, so we're going to use two parts paprika and two parts salt to one part white pepper, black pepper, and cayenne. You're just going to shake that up and get it good mixed up for your seasoning for your chicken. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, since I got this laying here, I'm going to sprinkle the chicken pretty good. And then we're going to uh, get out some egg for an egg wash. And we'll sprinkle the chicken some more too, okay? All right, we're going to beat up a couple of eggs. Beat it up good. All right, right now I'm just gonna season my chicken and dip it in the, in the egg wash. So I'm just seasoning the other side. You're gonna find that we um, are making, you can see how that stays on there really well even after you put it in the egg wash. Right now we are cooking some with skin on and some with skin off because believe it or not, uh, the skin actually soaks up a lot of oil and your, your chicken will be greasier if you leave the skin on. And it's really good with skin off. We like it better with skin off. And, and yes, we love crunchy skin, but that's just how we like it. Uh, we prefer it with skin off, but I wanted to fry some up both ways so that you guys could see it. Another thing is um, I love a buttermilk soak for chicken, but only when I'm doing chicken fingers, because when you're doing bone-in chicken, it has to cook a lot longer. And when the chicken is cooking longer, it gets really brown with a buttermilk uh, wash instead of an egg wash. An egg wash keeps it real pretty and golden. Now this does have a tiny kick to it, not a, you know, not real, it's not real hot. So keep that in mind when you're putting it on there. If you, uh, don't want to use the cayenne or you want to use half cayenne, but I'm going to tell you, this chicken, you won't even know. Um, if you don't put too much on it before you fry it, you're not even going to know it's got cayenne in it because it's, it's, per, it's a perfect am amount of seasoning. It really is. Now I'm going to start uh, battering the chicken. This is a self-rising flour. We use white lily self-rising flour down here in the south. Um, or my whole family did, and I believe Chris's did too. And so you're just gonna do a really good flour coating on each piece. And I'm just gonna scoot these over and let them sit over here for about 10 minutes before we fry it. If you let them sit for about 10 minutes before you fry it, um, the batter will stay on really good. And it, you won't have to worry about it coming off of your chicken while you're frying. So today we've got two wings, two breasts, two legs, two thighs, and one pulley bone. The meat's still there and the bones are still in there. It's just popped. I popped it. I don't have any kids, so I'm not too worried about it. All right. So now that we got this batter on, now's a good time to go ahead and start um, getting your iron skillet heated. You want it thoroughly heated. I'm over here washing my hands, but I want y'all to see that I did spread those out so that they would stick together and pull off some of the batter. Okay, today we're using peanut oil. Okay? It's the best thing to fry chicken in to me. So, let's get it in the pan. I 
I'm gonna make it at least an inch deep. This is a 10 inch cast iron skillet. And I'm gonna turn this heat up. It's a 10 inch cast iron skillet and it's three inches high. And I'll probably have to fry this chicken in two batches. Okay, and now we're heating up our oil. I like to get like a little piece off the chicken to drop down in the oil. And once it starts to flow, then I know that the oil is hot enough. And of course, right now it is not. All right, I've turned up the temperature and it is starting to swim around in the skillet. My chicken is not cold. It has been sitting out for about an hour and a half. So it's not, it's still gonna cool down the oil, but it's not going to just completely cool down the oil. We're gonna cook the skin side on first. This is the first time I have cooked with this stove. So I don't want to burn anything. We'll see how I do. And guess what, y'all? I don't even have a fork down here. I'm gonna put my pulley bone over here in this corner. I've got a lot of, I think I'll wait for the second batch uh, for the pulley bone because I got a lot of oil in here and some, a little bit of it will evaporate and that way I don't have to worry about it running over. I don't have tongs down here yet. I haven't been to the store and gotten any. So, y'all just bear with me. Now, this is getting too brown against the bottom. So, I've got it down on five now, and I'm hoping that'll keep it from doing that. We're going to wait and see. This is a trial. Um, because I've not used this stove before ever, and everything takes time to get used to. So if I get this back to brown, the next back should be perfect. And uh, I'm gonna start some more chicken. I'm gonna do the wing and the pulley bone while I'm finishing these two. All right, the breast is coming out. Before you drop a new batch of chicken, make sure you turn up your grease and it's good and hot before you drop the rest of it or it's going to get greasy. So I just turned up my oil to six. breaking down which means it's hotter so the more it does that the more you're going to have to kind of turn it down as you go to keep it from burning on the bottom you let your chicken rest a minute uh, before you eat it you need to let it rest a good five minutes okay so now we have two different uh, 
two different batches that we did. Get a few potatoes. I already like this bar, y'all. And I am going to get a wing from this. And I'll get the pulley bone from this one. Because this is skin off and this is skin on, of course. All right, let's cut into this pulley bone piece. Did you see that squirt? It's juicy. See the juice running out of the bottom? Onto the plate? It's delicious. I want to taste it. Mmm. Best chicken ever. to show you by using this paper towel the difference in a piece of chicken with skin on and skin off. This is a skin on thigh and I'm just going to open it up. And you can kind of see how the grease will get caught in between the skin and the chicken. Now y'all might like that and if you do by all means leave the skin on. Okay because a lot of y'all like to eat this part. I'll go ahead and take a bite for you, for those of y'all that just really like it. It is good. <laughs> we do have a vented exhaust here, which I did not have before. This is a electric stove, and we're gonna test it out frying chicken today. And so when I turned this on, I was like a kid in a candy store. I'm amazed. Let me just tell you, I'm just a country girl. That amazed me. Um, so anyway, we got open shelving in here. We got our letters in here for CBC. I've got all my serving pieces up here with some pretty glasses we're gonna use. Yes, we're gonna use them even if they're antiques because that's what's fun about having them is using them. And um, we just decorated it up for y'all and we hope you enjoy it. We hope you enjoy this wonderful video and of course, we are not officially moved in, so there's still a lot of little things to come, but we're just really excited, and um, we're excited that you guys are here with us. I hope y'all have enjoyed watching me make southern fried chicken in a cast iron skillet today, and for helping me learn how to use my new oven. Thanks for watching Color Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did.